So are world tiers worth it in the end game? Do you just want to get to that end game and enjoy it from there, where the true farming starts? Well guys, today I bring you the differences between world tiers and expedition challenge tiers, and in my opinion if world tiers are even worth progressing through. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more Outriders be sure to subscribe and make sure you turn those notifications on. So many of you probably or are playing a campaign like I did. As soon as a world tier was unlocked we would progress up, farm for gear to be on part with the enemies within that world tier so you can compete and then carry on with the story. I did this all the way up into the very last stages of the campaign. I was then told by my fellow family on stream that the way in which I was progressing and playing through the harder world tiers was completely useless due to when you finish the campaign world tiers don't have a single effect on the end game expeditions. At first I was like no chance world tiers are here for a reason. Having the standard gamer way of thinking I thought I knew what was best and what was right. Well when I did get to that end game and those expeditions I quickly realised that in fact my stream was right and I was wrong. And I say this in a sense of, I honestly thought end game started at a world tier 15 and somehow world tier 15 being unlocked had something more to it. But in fact guys that is not the case at all and let me explain. When you complete the story and you get access to expeditions, these expeditions have their own difficulties, they're called challenge difficulties, these have nothing to do with world tiers. It doesn't matter what world tier you are on when you get to these, there are expedition challenge tiers for you which will help you progress through earning higher level loot and becoming more powerful no matter what world tier you finish the campaign at and with these expeditions it only help you progress even quicker, way quicker than what the campaign can offer. Because as you can see expeditions on a challenge tier 1 drop loot at that level of 31 which won't really help you as a player unless you play through the campaign on a world tier 4 or below and are obviously at a character level 30. Expedition challenge tier 2 drops loot at a level 32 equivalent to world tier 5. Expedition challenge tier 3 is the same as a world tier 7 in regards to the level in which loot drops and while well, these stay on par all the way up to a challenge tier 9 which ultimately drops higher loot than that of a world tier 15 with plus 13 levels on loot from an expedition challenge tier 9 while world tier 15 only drops a plus 12. And this is the thing, world tiers in reality become pointless once you've run a few challenge tier 9 expeditions, because you're automatically already scaled over what loot in world tier 15 would drop for you. Now don't take this the wrong way, if you enjoy a challenge and want to take your time playing through the campaign that is 100% fine, you play how you want, but at the same time don't think playing up into that world tier 15 is necessary for end game because truly that is not the case. In fact the way I'd recommend you playing is go through the campaign and progress all the way up to a world tier 8 which would probably happen within the first quarter of the campaign and play on a world tier 8 until all your gear is that of a level 35, that's your weapons and armour. Then drop the world tier back down to a 7, a 6 or even a 5, the lower the better, it doesn't even matter. Doing this, please don't think you are cheating because let me tell you, the bosses towards the end of the game don't care what world tier you got it on, they still hit hard. But yes, once you have done this and finished the campaign, with that said armour you achieved on a world tier 8, which would be a level 35, you can then quickly jump into expedition challenge tier 5 and earn instant loot which will progress you up super fast to a gear level of 37 and you can just keep progressing from there up the expedition challenge tier levels. I mean if you are already into a world tier of 11, 12, 13, 14 or even 15 and haven't completed the story, even still when you do your gear will only be good enough for expedition challenge tier 7, 8 and 9. The quickest method without doubt in getting to that end game and up to the highest level of a character class level of 30 and a weapon and armor level of 52 is to 100% go through the campaign on a lower world tier and start progressing at the end game expeditions. As there is no question in my mind that if someone started a campaign progressing through all the world tiers against someone who started a campaign and did it on a low world tier, the guy on that low world tier would progress twice as fast in terms of earning that higher level loot within those expedition stages. I mean you'll get to the expedition stages way 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 quicker than someone who progresses through all the world tier levels in the campaign. But again guys this is just my opinion on how things work. 
You paid for the game though, you can play it how you please. Just don't feel you need to actually get to a world tier 15 for any reason when it comes to end game because you don't. But if you do want to finish everything within the campaign on a world tier 15 in terms of side quests, it's easier just to rush through the campaign on a low world tier, then level up within expeditions. Level up to a challenge tier 9 or 10, then go back to world tier 15 and do things from there, because then you'll be on a level with the enemies and it'll be loads easier for you. But yes, this is just my opinion on challenge tiers versus world tiers. I know a lot of people are confused about these and think world tiers actually mean something in terms of end game when they truly don't. But yes, the end of the video has arrived, guys. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Outriders on a daily basis, be sure to subscribe. If you never want to miss a stream or video, make sure you turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.